little rascals that are all coming back on their own. Um, this is a pine. This is a fir. It's just phenomenal. Tony Franks and Paul Hugo see new growth and new possibilities in the shadow of Pyramid Peak and the Sierra. My grandparents built the place in the late 40s. My great uncle built this cabin in 1947. For more than 70 years, these little rectangles in the woods, as they call them, have dotted the El Dorado National Forest. 975 people have cabins here, even though the land itself is in the National Park. So we are all issued a special use permit through the Forest Service to have to, uh, a recreational residence on this, on this piece of dirt uh, up here. <laughs> Those permits were issued as far back as 1915 in an effort to get more people to come to the national forests. The permit holders own the cabin, but not the land. That wasn't a problem until 2021. From KCRA 3, this is breaking news. That breaking news here, KCRA, all of South Lake Tahoe being evacuated because of the Caldor fire. The fire just took off and tore up the canyon and, uh, you know, wiped out everything. I was a basket case, just couldn't believe it. By August 27th, the Caldor fire had burned hundreds of thousands of acres and destroyed 177 recreational cabins. My father's ashes were in and we were going to distribute them and they were still sitting in the cabin waiting to be moved. Yeah, it was brutal. After two years, Franks and Hugo say they've been unable to rebuild due to red tape and the wording in those very old permits. They say some neighbors can't afford to rebuild or find it too traumatizing to go back. And if they don't rebuild, the permits go away. This is the largest loss of cabins in any fire on National Forest Service land. Linda Babcock is with the U.S. Forest Service. A permit is issued to a cabin owner if there's no structure there for them to inhabit, then they would not be able to, then there's no permit. Babcock says they are allowing cabin owners to rebuild, but it is not a short process, and many of the old cabins were built before current building codes. She says the Forest Service has a way to make sure at least some of the permits don't just vanish. Those people who won't rebuild, their permits could go to those whose lots are now unsafe due to impact from the Caldor fire. It'll go into the lottery system that uh, will be conducted um, in 2024 for permit holders that wish to rebuild. Living room, kitchen, little bedroom, and there was a little bit of a loft um, where we had quite a few beds for people to sleep. Paul Hugo found his dad's ashes and scattered them among the trees near the cabin he built. got one that is going to be the, the first shade tree of the, the new age. Meanwhile, Tony Franks will care for the new trees on his now empty lot. New growth he and Hugo say is just like this community, which they say has generations of people looking out for the land and each other. I could walk a mile and I knew every single cabin owner and half would invite me in for a beer. It's hard to have that community anywhere. Well, some of the permit holders have gotten permission to rebuild, including Tony Franks, in hopes that they can start rebuilding before winter. But Franks and Hugo say that the number of people who cannot rebuild is higher than the number of unsafe lots. And unless there is a change in policy by the U.S. Forest Service, many of those permits will simply expire.